Good morning. Good afternoon. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good. That's your normal seat? I know. My seat's taken. Who took your seat? So Fred. Okay. Guest moved. Uh, Name wasn't on it. <laughs> you trying to change up the mojo for us? Thank you, Fred. Yeah. Fred. Yeah. <clears throat> Fred's trying to change up the, the energy in the room. All right, good afternoon. Thanks, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. After we spoke, um, uh, after we last spoke, I um, did watch the, the film of, of the game on the plane and we got back. And it's, it's, you know, like what I said, it's a death by inches for us. So it's all about execution. Um, the question is, well, how do you get better execution? Well, that's, that's our job. That's what we're working on uh, right now. I felt like the defense played better in the second half. I'm seeing some improvements in some areas there. Um, and I think we're our best football is ahead of us. Um, offense, you know, started fast, but we have to sustain drives um, and make more explosive plays. Obviously, we had a lot of uh, drops. And we had some penalties that killed drives. Um, you know, special teams, we had some very irregular things that happened, um, which are all correctable. Uh, just uh, really operational type of deals. Um, and then again, I said it before, we have to play complimentary football. You know, we had offense, defense, and special teams have to work together for 60 minutes. I believe our, our best 60 is ahead of us. So we have a tremendous challenge this week with Ohio State. Obviously, we know they we have a great football team. They're very well coached. Um, we met as a team this morning. Uh, attitudes were great. We just had our first practice for the week, um, very, very focused, really good energy, uh, more determined, attention to detail, sense of urgency, you know, discipline, uh, the communication is really good, and those are the things that you look for moving forward um, when guys are really into it and uh, really focus in the meetings on the field, um, very upbeat um, and, and focused. So uh, that's a good sign for us. We had, so we had a good start, good start to the week. Um, and we're excited to be back home uh, in the woodshed. We know it's going to be loud. Our fans are going to be, they're going to be into it. Um, so we're looking forward to being home. We have, uh, we're going to have some, some big time recruits uh, at the game. So that's very important for us. Um, and obviously we know Ohio State's a great football team. So with that, I'll open it up. Hey, Mel, in the front to your left, I think. Uh, can you kind of go through the challenge that Ohio State presents offensively? Obviously, we saw what they were capable of doing last week and with C.J. Stroud and, and just the weapons they have at their disposal. Yeah, so um, the challenge is that they're very, they're very balanced. So they're extraordinary in the run game and also in the pass game. And they have a, you know, arguably the best quarterback in the country. So, you know, everyone's at the point of attack on every play. Uh, so Elijah Collins seems to be getting like a more featured role. Um, what have you guys seen from him out of practice that's mm -hmm. just kind of led to that move up the depth chart? Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, with the production that you see um, in the game from him, that's what we see in practice. You know, so, and it's been, cons it's been consistent and he's been improving. And so he's earned the opportunities to go in the game. And then when he's gone in the game, he's, he's done well. And he's does it. he has a really good attitude. He works really hard. Um, he's a great teammate, you know, um, and he does an excellent job on special teams. So he's very unselfish and he's hungry. And so, um, and I think that's why he's, that's why he's been productive in, in the role that, that he's had so far. I'm uh, wondering, um, just one play in particular, um, that, that 68 yard run mm -hmm. in, in the second half, I'm wondering what happened on the communication there between uh, Brooks and uh, Williams, and it, it seemed like they weren't in the right place, then they got in the right place, and then maybe missed some tackles. Is that kind of like one of those plays that's kind of epitomizing that death by inches in some ways? Yeah, that was a uh, good question. That was KB and in and, uh, and speed there. Yeah, so um, we we actually got into the, we actually got into the right call, um, and, uh, and then we need to be aligned closer to the line of scrimmage to make to make that actually an easier play, uh, and then we need to. Um, a line, uh, Amir needs a, a line maybe a two yards wider 
but we have two unblocked, unblocked players uh, there um, to make a play on one guy. So um, that's a play that should be made. It um, that actually should be a tackle for loss. Cause we're actually you know coming off the edge there. Yeah, even in the, even in the spots that they were in, um, that should be a tackle for loss. And you know, at a, a three yard gain at the most, even where they were. I mean, they weren't they weren't far off, but from a detail standpoint, you know, better alignment, the correct alignment, um, you know, obviously could make make a difference. Mel, you, you've been a part of upsets throughout your career, I'm guessing both ends and, and whatnot, probably dating. I think you were a grad assistant when you guys beat Ohio State um, in 98 or what. Are there, are there dynamics that are important in a matchup where there's something that hasn't shown up on film yet in terms of when you look at a matchup that you need to happen this week to beat a team that's performing at, at the level they are? Yeah, you have to, uh, first of all, you have to believe. That's one. Um, and then you have to strip the name off the jersey. Okay, and um, and go to work, preparation, um, and 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 go and play the next play. You know, during the game, just take it from the meeting room to the practice field. Um, do it so many times right in practice where you can't get it wrong in the game. Then you take it to the game. You play one play at a time. You know, never looking at the scoreboard. You know, just keep playing. And so, uh, it's not there's not anything real complicated about it. But it starts with the belief. Uh, and then it goes from there. Mel, uh, they got a new defensive coordinator over this year. I'm just wondering, you know, what's different on that side of the ball that you're seeing from them from previous years? Yeah, I like I like uh, what Knowles is doing. They uh, they're very decisive decisive on uh, on defense and they play fast. They have a lot of speed um, and they and they flow fast to the ball. You know, so they're going to make sure that you can't. Uh, run the ball inside and want to make you run the ball sideways and they want to you know use their speed um, to uh, you know to track you down and make sure they got good edges so um, they're playing they're playing fast and they they're very um, they're it seems like they know where their help is and where they fit I just I think they're just playing fast. They're playing fast, and, and they, they have a lot of good players, and they're and they're on the same page. And so, um, you know, that's what I see. I see um, execution and playing, playing fast and being physical. Mel, as you stretch, you stress the urgency to get better. How do you maintain a calm amidst the storm? The storm being three straight losses. How do you do that? Yeah. Well, I mean, first block out the noise, and that's important. And the most important thing is what we do next. And anger, frustration, you know, what it could have said, all those things, you know, really, um, you know, they don't really help you move forward um, because it's all about what we have to do right now. So you learn from the past, whether it's good or bad, and you own it, whatever it is, you own it, and then you get to neutral, decide what's the next, the next best step to take, and you take those, take that step, and then you take the next step and the next step, and that's that's the process. That's how you do it. Yes. Hey, Mel, on the front here again. I think it's been a couple of weeks since we could have asked you, but can you talk about uh, or describe how Ken Talley came about, you know, going to use at Penn State briefly and, and you know coming here? Yeah, he just he became available, um, and then you um, know we acted on it, and that's that's pretty much it. And would your projection for him, how he fits into your scheme, and, and yeah. are you applying for a waiver to try and make him eligible? Yeah, we don't. I don't have a projection for him at this time, you know, so. Really, really focus on the guys that are available to play for us right now. Yeah, that's not something that I'm really, really focused on right now. You know, so he'll be ready when he's ready. Mel, I think your teams have won eight of the last nine at home. You've talked about the crowd, how important that's been for you uh, when it's had that kind of support. You know what Ohio State's traveling party can be like, and if they're coming up here trying to buy tickets. How important do you think it is for your crowd to show up and uh, not to be selling seats on Saturday morning? It's important. It's very important. You know, so um, I know that our guy, I know that our fans are going to show up, and I know they're going to be loud, and I know they're going to be into it. So it's very important. Uh, our 
home field should be an advantage for us. Is it important that you get off to a good start, even more than normal, for that to get your crowd into the game instead of having them taken out of it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be important that we get off to a great start, regardless. You know, but you know, obviously, you know, our our crowd is is wanting to see good football, great football, and execution, and that's what that's what we aim to deliver. Other, uh, other than Darius Snow last year, Angelo Gross was the most productive for you on defense against Ohio State. Mm -hmm. How do you hope or anticipate that he performs in that way this year? And also, how much better has he been since moving to the nickel spot? And why, why is that? Yeah, Jello was, did, a, did a nice job at the nickel spot. That's, that's a spot that's, that's, uh, that's good for him. Um, and he didn't, he didn't have... Uh, as much work at the position as we would like um, in practice, um, but the work that he got in maybe a practice and a half, um, you know, he showed, uh, you know, what he's shown in the past at, at that position because initially that's that's where he played, you know, as a freshman when he stepped on the field, and so um, I, I feel like he's going to get better because he's going to get more time on task uh, in practice, and, that, and that's important. That's a very important position for us, um, and so. Um, you know, I feel good about him there. I think his best his best football is ahead of him. What was the second part of your question? Just about how important it'll be for him to have that production against a team like Ohio State, but still mm -hmm. guys. Yeah, so uh, it puts a lot of pressure on your defense, and it's not just uh, you know the D line or the linebackers or the corners. I mean, it's that nickel position is critically important for uh, the run game, perimeter run support, uh, the RPO game, uh, and then also in, in coverage. You have to be a really good tackler, and you have to be adjustable. So they have a lot, a lot of shifts and a lot of motions and things like that. So he has experience, so it can be important that we get high-level production from him at that position. Well, you mentioned it being a big recruiting weekend. Um, I'm just wondering, when, how does what's happening on the field affect? I mean, that's not going to affect how you're recruiting, yeah. but does it, is, does it become tougher, or does it change at all when things aren't going well in the field, as opposed to obviously when things are rolling? Does it, does it get tougher, I guess? Yeah, well, I think it depends on who you're recruiting and what they're looking for, and what's and what you know what what is their criteria. You know, if I'm a if I'm a recruit um, and I'm being recruited by uh, Michigan State, I'm saying that's a place that, that is hungry to win football games. They have a great fan base. You know, great alumni support. You know, it's big time football, and you know, I have an opportunity to go in there and uh, and contribute. You know, if I come in here and I'm ready to play and I do what I'm supposed to do, you know, and I can be part of, uh, you know, part of the build. You know, and and the uh, emergence and the surge moving forward. You know, so um, you know, and that's those are the type of guys we need. We need guys that want to come in here and do something significant. And do something extraordinary. Hey, uh, Mel, you said uh, Ohio State. Something that impressed you about their defense is the way they're on the same page. Mm -hmm. With your defense, did you see progress in that area? Your defense more on the same page in this yes. game? Yes. Yeah, I, I do. I see that. I see uh, uh, more gaining more experience, uh, learning how to play uh, more together, um, and, uh, and, that, and that's important. And to uh, get the, the right group of guys together um, so that we can play, you know, we can play, you know, sound, solid football, you know, good team defense. You have to, you have to know your job and, um, and do it well and trust that the guy next to you knows his job and he's going to do his job well so we can all uh, play fast and, and be physical and trust, and trust, you know, what we're doing, trust the call and go, and, and, and go execute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he. It was a good start for him. You know, he uh, he played hard, and um, you know he was into it. Um, I didn't see any hesitation from him, and so, uh, and he's shown that you know in practice, um, and so uh, I th his best football is ahead of him. You guys have faced a run of pretty seasoned and talented quarterbacks. That, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't make making changes on the fly any easier. And I'm, I'm wondering what C.J. Stroud 
presents in terms of his, the differences from what you faced to this point? Yeah, so uh, he's, a, he's a very accurate passer, um, and he's, he's really smart, um, and he's tough, um, and um, he's really good with the, with the uh, getting, getting those guys into the right plays, and he knows where to go with the ball in the passing game. Um, and so he's very efficient. And uh, he's good with the short throws, the intermediate throws, and, and obviously the deep ball. And then he, he's mobile. So uh, he can extend plays uh, with his legs, and he's always looking downfield to make plays. Um, but if he needs to, he can pull it down and run, you know, and uh, you know, advance the ball and, uh, to score or, you know, to move the chains or, you know, and slide and get what he can get. So um, he's, he's that guy that can do all of those things consistently. I know a few players have changed for them on offense, but how much do you use last year's film to now get ready for Saturday's game? We, 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 certainly, we certainly have to, have to we study that the last year's film to see what's carrying over uh, and what's not. And then, um, you know, what, uh, any success that we had or anything that hurt us, um, you know, we can expect to see those things again. But so that's part of the, that's part of the breakdown. That's part of the, uh, we take that into account when we game plan, when we watch film. You know, that's certainly a, one of the games that we study. Looking back at the film, um, particularly the second half, what changed with Peyton? Um, seemed like some of his throws were a little off the mark, and maybe some of the decisions that he made with running out of bounds on the one play, mm -hmm. and then you know a couple of the other decisions that he made. I guess w when you watched it back, what what maybe was different than the first half? Yeah, I don't I don't know if there was anything that was different. I mean, we just you know from an execution standpoint, you know we have to execute better and more consistently, and it's not just him, but it's everyone involved. We had a lot of drops. We had some penalties that, that uh, killed drives. You know, we had missed opportunities, you know, so um, you know, it all contributes to you know, how it looks out there. Mel, I think you were 9-1 and one and playing for a championship last year when you went to Columbus, kind of ran into a buzzsaw there. How do you stop? Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> how, how do you stop uh, one score or one big play by them from turning into the kind of 21 or 28 point blitz they get so often? Yep. You, you can stop that that one. Stop it, and it doesn't happen. That that helps. And then you always have to play the next play. I mean, so it's just like I told the players. I told the players this morning. This the. The first thing I told him this morning, okay, I said, write this down. Okay, you will always be defined on how you um, how you uh, handle adversity. You know how you respond to adversity, not just on the football field, but beyond, outside of football, in life. You know how how you because you're going to be in adverse situations. I mean, it's everything. We I mean, we're all adults here. We know that everything is not always peaches and cream. I mean, there's, there's bumps in the road and some are severe uh, and some not so much, but there's adversity. And it doesn't get any easier as you go. I mean, um, you, know, you sit here waiting for the easy bus to come around. The, the easy bus isn't coming. So how do you handle it? How do you handle adversity? Like, so if you, if you, I told him, I said, like, it's going to be, uh, you know, like, your, your kids, your children, they're gonna, there's gonna be adversity and they're gonna see, they're gonna be watching to see how you respond. You know, it could be, you know, your family members, they're gonna watch you and see how you respond. You know, your friends, you know, how do you respond to adversity? Um, and, that's, and, and that's important. And so, uh, so for example, you, you give an example, if a, um, they score on a, like a big play, right? So, uh, how do how do you handle that? So, what we tell the players is, and we talk to them about this on a consistent basis. Um, and it's it's like this in on football, and it's like this in life. Okay, the 
you know, it's what's important now. And we behave our way to success, which is the actions that we take. That's what creates the outcome. And it's all about what we do next. So the call comes in, play call comes in, offense, defense, and special teams. Okay, so you communicate, you get the call, and then you review your assignment, right? And then quickly review your assignment, and then you play the play, and you apply force, okay? And then, um, then you need a, a quick evaluation of that play, a quick evaluation of that play, good or bad. And it's about a six second play. Um, and you evaluate it, good or bad, and then you own it. Whatever was bad, you own it. If it's good, you own it. And then you get to neutral, okay? And then you go to the next play. Now, that takes mental toughness, um, but it's both ways, though. I mean, you, uh, you score, a, you, you make a big play on defense or a big play on special teams or a big play on offense. It's more, it's, it's important that you, you know, evaluate it. Why did I have success? Okay, well, let's keep, no, I need to make sure I continue to do that. And then you own it, okay? And then you got to move on because you're only as good as your next play. So you have to keep going. Same thing with adversity. And that's, and that, and that's, that's neutral thinking. I mean, that's, and that's how, that's how it, it goes, you know? So you don't, you drive into work, you drive into work, boom, I got a flat tire, okay? You know, I'm going to be late. Okay, well, this is the facts. I mean, like, it's not good, bad, right, or wrong. It just is what it is. What do I need to do now, right? And then you take that next right step, and then you move forward. You know, you can't have a poor me's, because not, that's, not that's not gonna do anything for you. And so, um, you know, that's how we coach our guys. And there's no, there's no secret to it. It's just, just mental toughness, it's, it's mindset, it's mental conditioning, and it's focus, and focus is a skill. You mentioned what goes into an upset, if it's believing and stripping the name off of a jersey. Um, the adversity that you talk about, what would a win, an upset over a team like Ohio State mean to this program right now? Yeah, so for us, it's, not, it's, it's, it's critically important that we, that that's not our focus for us. It, our focus is not on the end result. The focus for us right now on a Monday is the process. You know, what do we have to do today? in preparation, the required work, the unrequired work, two day to stack this day, and then move forward to the next day in the process. So that's our focus all the way. And then when we get to the game, you, we do that, and we play the next play, play the next play, play the next play. And then at the end, then we look at the scoreboard and we see what it says. Affection or appreciation you have for Ohio State and its excellence having spent time there. I have a lot of respect for Ohio State, a lot of respect. Can you elaborate on having spent time there and what, why they're so good? Yeah, we won a lot of games when, we were, when I was there. It wasn't because of me, but you know, I was, we had a good program and we won a lot of games. We won a national championship and it was good. It was a good, it was a good run there. You know, it's, good, it's an excellent program. I mean, I was part of that and it's, it's, it's been that historically, you know, so, um, and Ryan Day is doing, a, is doing a great job of recruiting. He's doing a great job of coaching. He's a very, he's an excellent leader. Um, and he's, uh, you know, he's you know, working hard to raise the bar there and, you know, continue, you know, the excellence and, and, and add to it, increase excellence, you know, Makde Bertute. I'll add that he has a great first name too, Mel. Uh, that's Ryan over here. Um, Did you just get here? No, I've been here the, the whole time. You've been here the whole time. The whole okay. time. Okay. Uh, so, so I wanted to, to ask you something that has nothing to do with Ohio State or your current team, but you know, you look here. We're three days into October, and there's already been five FBS programs that have kicked their coaches to the curb. What does that maybe to you say about the state of, of college athletics right now? It's a uh, it's a production business. You know, that's what it is. You know. In that regard. I mean, do you feel like it sends the wrong message to college athletes when you say, hey, stick together, stick with the team, don't go to the transfer portal, but you're not even halfway into the season and you're, you're telling the coach to get out the door? Well, you know, I think it's important to be realistic with the players and, 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 not, uh, and take it for what it is. 
you know, so um, that's not something that we that we talk about. Um, but you know, who are we kidding, right? So it's important to be realistic, you know, about everything that we do and and be aware, and then and then and then control what you can control. But um, I mean, this is that's the reality of the situation, obviously, and that's what we sign up for. You know, so this is not this is not. This is voluntary. Well, last thing on that, given that one of the schools just made a move with your alma mater, were you shocked, surprised? Any any thoughts on Paul Chris getting dismissed? Uh, nothing shocks or shocks me or surprises me uh, at all. And uh, in anything that we're doing from a football standpoint, you know. Yeah, because um, you, know, you, you don't want to be up, you want to have consistency in performance. You can't be up and down with a yo, like a yo. You can't be a front runner when everything's going well. You know, you're jumping up and down, you're celebrating, everybody's smiling, and you know, it's just like, you know, like you won a Super Bowl, and then, uh, then some adversity hits, uh, and then everyone's in a tank. You know, so that's not, you know, that's not a winning formula. That's not a that's not a, a championship mindset. That's not how you go about go through life, you know, just up and down. You know, um, it's all about consistency and performance. And like the more, in my mind, the more neutral you are, the more intense you are, the more focused you are. It 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 um, it requires a, 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 a tremendous amount of intensity. It requires a tremendous amount of focus, discipline, you know, self control. Uh, to to think that way, because if you if you uh, can't figure out how to think like that, then you're going to do things based upon how you feel, and not based upon the standard. You know, and we all know that we don't always feel like doing certain things, um, but that doesn't that doesn't change what what you know what needs to be done. And so it's not about it's the, it's it's standard over feelings, standard over emotion. And so uh, neutral thinking is not easy to do. Um, but like I say, you know, focus is a skill, and that's why we call it mental conditioning. It's just like, it's just like physical conditioning. It takes reps, and you learn, and then you keep going. Well, I mean, they're 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 in my they're in my office. They're really hard to get. You know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to finish first, no matter where you are, what you're doing, in any sport or anything you're doing. It's hard to finish first, um, and so you know they're there. But I remember Jim Trussell. I don't wear them. I mean, every now and then I may I may you know throw it on, you know maybe, but it's not for me. Um, but I remember Jim Trussell told us uh, 2002 because he he had. I believe he had four national championships at, at Youngstown State before he got to Ohio State. And then in 2002, we won uh, the national championship. And then obviously there's a lot of hoopla and all that. And go out to center court, you know, basketball game, and everybody's cheering and all that. And, and they, then the rings come in. And, uh, and Coach Trussell told the staff and staff means staff and he said, don't let me catch you wearing your ring or looking at your ring. He said, don't let me catch you looking at your ring. So just, just don't wear it, and you don't have to worry about it. So I don't wear, I don't, I don't wear them. I never have, you know. So this is it's a good point. I mean, that's all, you know. It's already in the books, right? What's next? You know, you keep, you know, looking in the past. Um, you know, that's not, that's not going to help you very much. And as we talked about, it's a production business, right? It's all about what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me today? Not last year or two years ago or five years ago. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love, love that sweater. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Love that sweater. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for coming out. Go green.